All right, everybody, this is Ross. We're gonna pick some figs with you guys today. We have uh, two figs over here that are ripening. It's called uh, Capulcurt Negra. Quite a nice variety here from Ponds. We have two of them that have ripened. Actually, there was a, a f one that ripened a couple days ago. Wasn't the best quality. We'll see what these ones have uh, to show for us here. I'm gonna pick them. And we're gonna do a little bit of a tasting here and talk about the flavor of figs, the fig itself, the beauty of these things, why they're so tasty, why I obsess over them, why we spend so much time growing and learning about figs. I imagine these are quite good. They don't look too good. It's been raining here. We had uh, two inches of rain recently. So, but for whatever reason, they actually look like they've dried up a bit on the tree which is really nice to see. Um, I don't know why, I guess because it's so warm. But what I'm gonna do here for you guys is we're gonna cut these open, we're gonna talk about these fruits, and hopefully you guys will enjoy this little experience here. So, first thing I wanna mention with these particular fruits is that, well, they have an interesting shape to them. And all figs have different shapes. And uh, it's actually, believe it or not, one of the more leading indicators of identifying a variety. So if you're, you're a bit struggling to identify a variety, you wanna look first at the shape. And these are more squatty. I don't know the exact term for these, but there is a, a term for this exact shape that you'll find. And while this variety is called Capulcurt Negra, it might not be the most mature just yet. It's also been through quite a bit of rain. There might be a little bit of spoilage in here. They've got a big eye on them, unfortunately. I would say this variety is mid-season. Um, as it is in, in Spain, in Mallorca, as I said, it's a variety from Pons. So Pons really knows his stuff here, guys. And uh, without a doubt, you can count that whatever he says in his book, you're gonna have some pretty good information on it. Um, what else can I tell you guys? There's a short stem here. And I guess when the fig is kind of, you know, attached to the tree like this, uh, it's easy to not be able to harvest them from the stem because it's so short. If you had a longer stem here, that came, maybe came out to here, be very easy to pick them from the stem. As we pick them from the stem right here, it's very easy to maybe, let's say, tear them from the neck because that's the leading indicator of when these figs are ripe, is we can feel the neck here. And if the neck is soft, the fig is ripe. And that, in all honesty, is a bit difficult with this particular variety to determine, well, mostly because it doesn't have much of a neck. It's really squatty, as I mentioned, in shape. So if the fig also is kind of hanging off like this and there's a lot of rain that comes in, I find the rain doesn't necessarily shed off the fig. And I believe Eisen or Condit had mentioned this in one of, his, uh, one of their writings. And that creates a lot more issues with rain. So if you're really interested in a variety and you live in a rainy spot, you may wanna have figs that kind of are not of this squatty shape, more of a, a pyramid form like Celeste, and don't necessarily hang like this. Instead, they might hang like that, if you can understand what I'm saying. And then they're not as squatty, and they'll come out more like this in an oval shape, rather than what you see here is kinda of like a, a circle oddly enough. You can see some sugar spots here. This is what these black spots are on the fig. This is supposed to be a, uh, a dark variety, but in certain climates it may not get dark. The potassium in the soil really determines the color of the skin. So maybe if you don't have enough potassium, you may not get the, the right colors. Um, also depends on the, the climate, right? If it's really warm, you have a lot of sun, you may have different colors than somebody that's a bit colder with less sun um, on your fig. So for me, the biggest indicator in determining if this variety is correct is the shape, not the colors. Um, so let's 
cut this open here. We use our knife. And uh, nothing crazy here. We're just gonna make a cross section. If you guys are trying to identify your variety, this is what you need to do. You need to get photos of the leaves and the fruits. And you need to have not just photos of the outsides, but also the inside of the fruit cut in half. And that, to me, doesn't look that good. So, these figs are a bit, they're struggling a bit here to get ripe. But, nonetheless, they are a fig. And I find that some of the, the earlier figs of the year struggle a bit in flavor and... Uh, yeah, and they just don't necessarily form the best. You can see within the fig, there are some brown parts of the flower there. And that just simply indicates that the flower did not form properly. And therefore, you need either a mature, more mature tree to properly evaluate the flavor. Um, or you might need some pollination or your tree is just doing a little bit of an issue, having a little bit of an issue early in the season as it is. Um, so these are the first couple figs. I find the first couple figs aren't necessarily the best quality, but we're gonna try them here, guys. And I hope that you guys are learning something here in this particular video. All right, so. Let's try our first first fig here. Just inspecting the inside. Doesn't look that good. Doesn't have much flavor to it, I imagine. So like a nice wine, if you're really experienced with tasting wine, you should be able to look at the interior or look at the wine and be able to make some judgment calls as to how it's gonna taste beforehand. And it's the same thing with this particular fig. It's not necessarily the most ripe. There's not a whole lot of uh, juice in here. Probably doesn't have the most sugar. Um, not the most ideal fruit, I imagine. But, you know, it was struggling here with this rain and there is getting some ants in here. So I wanted to pick this sooner rather than later. The interior color here is a, a light red. Normally this will get more of an orangey or a uh, a darker red color so another indicator that it's just not perfect um, but that very that that red color or that orange color can really determine the flavor and I would imagine with a red color like that it should have some sort of berry flavor to it um, also the acanes within the fig are the white little flower parts there that you see we mentioned the browner darker colored flower parts that didn't really form properly. The white ones are the acnes, and the acnes determine the texture of the figs. So if they're longer or more numerous, you're gonna have more of a meatier tasting fig. This one historically has been not so meaty, more like jam, a smoother fig that's been um, really tasty. Um, so we'll see what this one does. It may not have the perfect texture because it's just not ripe to perfection, but let's try it. Mm. It's very good, actually. I'm not getting too much berry flavor. I'm actually getting more of the brown sugar figgy flavor. As the fig looks like, because it's so warm here, it's trying to dry up on the tree a bit. So we get a lot of that figginess not a whole lot of berry, but also a little bit of meloniness because it's not necessarily ripe to perfection. As the fig ripens, a lot of that melon flavor starts to fade. The figginess increases and also the berry flavors can potentially start to increase if they are present within the fig. So I imagine if this thing ripened longer, we'd have less melon, as I said, more berry, Probably more sweetness, a higher bricks, um, and then more figginess, of course. Nonetheless, very good. For a fig that's, uh, you know, 
not perfectly ripe, it is quite good. Now, the texture here is not necessarily that smooth jamminess that I really like because it's not so ripe just yet. On the more ripe parts of the fig where there is that nectar, that fig nectar forming, right? The fig can form something that's similar to honey or agave nectar or a syrup within the fig um, that you'd probably see actually in melons. You can see their own nectar in, in things like melons. I've also seen them in grapes. Um, so the fig is not alone in different fruits forming its own nectar. Even just when you bite into a ripe peach, you know how that drips down your chin. So it's the same thing with figs, except this one doesn't have the most nectar. And therefore, it's not forming that more solidified, smooth, jammy texture to it. This is more meaty, almost like you're eating meat. And you can feel the more individual striations within the fig. But normally it's quite thick, a very thick jam, I like to describe it. Well, also quite good. I think that one was a little bit less ripe. I'm still getting more of that brown sugar, maple syrup flavor, the figginess I'm talking about. Not a whole lot of berry just yet. But, just have to be patient guys um, as they ripen every day on the tree more and more the flavors the complexity increases the sugar content increases we just have to be more patient and uh, if it wasn't for the rain two inches of rain I'm not kidding uh, two days ago they came in while they were ripening I would be uh, a lot less a lot more reluctant to pick them when I did today so as an example um, I could have let these ripen maybe another three days on the tree, maybe four. And they would probably have their full range of flavors if you can be patient. But here's the issue is that if I were not to pick them today, would they spoil tomorrow? Would they have molds? Would they have issues? Would the insects have really gotten to them? Because um, there is some ants here crawling on the plate. I don't know. It's always a little bit of a risk, right? A roll of the dice, but uh, it's something you got to deal with. So hopefully you guys got this little bit of a little bit of experience here into what the, the fig tastings are going to be like over the next few months. We're going to have so many different varieties, so many figs to taste and eat this year. I want to try to get a lot of them on camera that are um, of the higher quality figs, but also some that are on the lower quality of figs. Uh, that way you guys have some good sort of uh, description here. I would say this fig was probably a two and a half, maybe a three, probably a three out of five. So there's a lot more potential that can come with these. I'd say a two and a half. Two and a half is pretty solid. So, you know, just imagine what a five out of five is like if this is only a two and a half. I would, you know, really... Um, I would really say that this fig here reminds me a lot of something slightly better than, um, than store quality. So if you can get a fig at the store and eat that, this is slightly better than that. Um, and that is only a two and a half out of five. So thank you guys here so much for watching this one. I hope you, again, learned something about the flavors of figs. We've done many hours now of lessons on what it's like eating a fig, the many flavors of figs, the textures of figs, uh, you name it. I hope you guys are starting to get this fig bud, fig bud, bud, <laughs> fig bug, excuse me guys. And uh, you guys can be maybe on your way to being as passionate and excited as I am about these particular fruits. It really is a joy to have your own fresh figs right off the tree. So check out our blog, guys. We have tons of fig information there, figboss.com. And hit that subscribe button. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Stay tuned for the next video. We'll see you guys later, all right? Take care.